So let's start with, let me do zoom in a little bit. So let's start with how to define imperative programming in Python. So here we define function called add. Given A and B, we just return A plus B. And some fancy function, function that given A, A, B, C, D inputs and just do three adds and return G. If we call this function given data one, two, three, four, we're gonna get the results. That's as normal as what we have before. Um, you maybe don't know that in Python you can actually use in symbolic programming. That is, we first define a function, it do add, but doesn't actually compute that. That returns a stream function, which is doing the thing, uh, which is gonna do the uh, work for you. Similar thing, for the fancy function, we just return a string of the function, which should do the workload. The program here is that we get the add definition, get the fancy function definition, and then we print the evaluation here. So far, until this moment, we didn't get anything wrong. We just uh, defined the function. Um, so we know that if we print this one, we're gonna get a bunch of def definition here. Then we compile this function, this stream function, to get executable y, and this is use Python's uh, execute to run the function. And then finally, we're gonna get the final results. Let me do, in final, we get the results 10 here. Okay, so this is symbolic programming in Python. You maybe never used that before. It's so hard to use. Okay, so then in Amstrad, let's show example how to use a hybrid sequential. That's an important library. And the only def difference here is to, from n dot sequential to n dot hybrid sequential. That's the only difference we have. The following three lines, we just add three dense layers. It's as same as before. And then we initialize the network, um, return the network. Next, we create a random variable x and get the network and feed x into network, get the results. That is what we had before. Okay, so this one, it's uh, executed in the imperative model. Now we can call net.hybridize. We are, for the back end, gonna switch to the symbolic execution. Um, so, but nothing have changed on the front end. You fit the thing x, you get the second results. Like, as here, the results should be similar to here. Nothing has been changed in terms of the results. Okay, so that's, Using net.hybridize, you can switch to the uh, hybridize uh, model. We can benchmark the performance here. So we define benchmark function, which is gonna run the forward pass by 1,000 times. And then wait, we're gonna show why we have a wait all here, but wait all the computation have been finished, and then print the time. Firstly, we create a network and run it, benchmark it without hybridizing. Then we call hybridize and benchmark again. You can see that like without hybridizing, it take about 0 0.2 seconds. With hybridizing, it can be a two times speed up here. Okay, the reason is because we explained before, after hybridizing, we just uh, compile the code once and run for the back end. So we can get rid of the Python overhead here and because the, net, the network itself is pretty simple and we run thousands of network and in 0 0.1 seconds, which means the network workload is pretty small, um, the Python overhead is relatively large compared to the workload. In this case, you can think about like at least one, 0 0.13 seconds is, is due to the Python overhead. Question. Mm -hmm. When you call net of x, are you mm -hmm. saying like in the forward function, it has to step through each line, so like it has to access Python, yeah. to execute each line? Yes. So we, yes, we're gonna cover that in detail a little bit later. Yeah, we're gonna cover what, how it works. And when you hybridize it, what do you compile it to like C, C++ or something? Yes, we're gonna do, yeah. Other question? What, are there any cases in which the line net.hybridize takes a very long time? 
you mean the cases after hybridizing take a long time? Usually, usually hybridization is always faster than the imperative model. Um, Um, well, we probably, we are not diving into so much deep how hybridizing works, but usually you don't, the only difference is like, after hybridizing, maybe it don't give you too much benefit, but usually, at most, you don't worse your computation. That's, that's all, yeah. But the compiler itself is pretty fast. It's like, uh, you, you can ignore that. Okay, um, so then, once you hybridize that, you can export this one, the network definition into a intermediate representation. When you do that, it's gonna save into the name of the um, your workload and dash symbol with a symbolic representation and the JSON file. We print the, the first 20 lines of the code. You can see that this bunch of this is a bunch of nodes, this is a computation graph actually, define the network. So this fire, um, let's own is a JSON fire. It's independent of Python. Let's say you can load back into a C++ backend or to a Java backend, or you can load back into uh, Python as well. So which means it's kind of portable. You can uh, let get this JSON file and deploy into mobile phone. Okay, question. Are there like Java front ends for MXNet? Yeah, so we, so we have Java and Scala back, uh, front end. Uh, even have a JavaScript, it's, <laughs> it's kind of Java. <laughs> Well, that's a joke. <laughs> well, um, let me go through a little bit how hybridize works. So n the other way that we can do the earn dot hybrid block here, um, the, in the init function is not defined to before. We de define two dense layers here. The only thing here happens here, we don't define a forward function. We do a hi hybrid forward function. And the one change here, we add an f here. Before we don't have f. f is a functional space. So in the imperative model, f is just the nd name space. When in the symbolic model, f is just symbol module for that. It's another name space, but we're gonna show you later. So here we're gonna print what is f, and what is the input x, same thing, give an x to the hidden layer, and the ReLU here, know that the ReLU came from the function space f. So in normal, it's just ND. And then we print the output of the hidden layer and put it into the output layer and return the results. That's as normal as before, but we're just adding three print here. Let's do that. Let's uh, define the network, initialize it, get x, and run the forward function here. So you can see that, that firstly, f is just the m set ND array, okay? And we print x, the input x, this is ND, uh, this is ND array, this just a, this x. Uh, the hinder layer output is not ND array as, as normal, we see that before, and we get output here. Okay, that's normal, you, how you debugging things. We're gonna run the game, same results. The f is the ND array, x, uh, the input x, the output of the hinder layer, and the output layer. Okay, so next time, here, here's the interesting thing. So we call hybridize, switch to the symbolic mode. And then we run that again. You can see that F has been changed to the symbol module. Symbols, you can think, is almost identical to the ND, but it's in the symbolic um, presentation. So any function is available in the ND namespace is also available in the symbol namespace. So what is X? X is not ND array anymore, X is a symbol. It's called data. The length data. And the hidden output, the output of the hidden layer is not ND array anymore, it's just a symbol. It's a, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, symbol symbolic of the, the variable. So, but at the end, we still get output here. So nothing changed at the end. So what we actually do here is that, let's, Go back to the definition here. Remember what the, in Python, how we do is symbolic programming. So we, so this function again, we're not run the real workload. We just construct 
the symbolic expression as we defined the program stream before. So here, x is a symbol input, f is a symbolic, is a symbol namespace. Then we, up to here, we just construct the symbolic program. After that, the system, we compile this, compile this program and feed with the data you actually put here and run the results. So it has an additional construct a new, ne new network, compile it, and run the results. So what happens if you're gonna run, after hybridize, if you're gonna run it again? Run it again, you only get the results. You will not see all these in intermediate things. That is because we only construct the, the graph once. So which means this function can only be run once. The first time you run it, we construct the graph, compile it, and cache in the back end. The next time you're gonna run it, I cannot, I'm not going to run all the Python code so we can reduce the time. I can, no, no matter how, the, how long the program you have, I don't need to execute one by one, so I can reduce all this overhead. So this benefit for performance, but the problem here, yes, again, print doesn't work anymore because you don't get the data yet at, at this point, at this point, and it only run once. Only the first time, time you get to print the results. The second time you, can, you will not get any results. So to debug this program, you need to add in like the print function provided by the ND namespace to get it fancy to get it run. Question. I yeah. The first time you need to run the program to construct a computation graph. When the graph is done, compiled, we can, I, I, we are not going to run this function anymore. Next time, just to call the compiled objects here. Can you go to the next slide? Yeah. So when you call net equals hybridized net. Yeah. Um, hybridized, yeah. Oh, okay. So after you call net dot hybridized, the computation graph gets constructed? No, um, this one can hint the, the back end and not switch to the symbolic execution. If you kind of run the forward pass here, which, which is net x, we can to run this function, um, uh, which is gonna run this function, hybrid forward. The first time you run it, you're gonna construct a graph and do the same thing. So similar to what we had at the beginning, so similar thing to here, you first run the forward function is actually just to give the string of the, uh, the program, and then the system will be automatically insert these three things that compile the execute things at, at the end. But the second I'm gonna run it, it just, I just run the execute, uh, execute Y, and without running anything here. Okay. So even though it's a n n dot hybrid block, it's not um, symbolic until you call n dot hybrid. Yes. It's still inherited. Before yes. You call net hybrid. Yes. So because symbolic is so hard to use, we don't in encourage people to use it at the beginning. So in practice, what we do here, just using normal imperative work uh, to debug, to write the code, uh, to test anything, at the end, you think everything is normal. Now I can run a large data set, switch to the hybrid, hybrid model, and run the experiments. And also, you're gonna train the model, you're gonna deploy into your mobile phones, you can use a hybrid model. That's the only thing you're gonna use it. Uh, but before you debug everything, just to keep it imperative. Okay, so um, that's the end of the